don't know. I never really knew what it was I wanted to do. It was always, always YouTube. I started a vlog series every single Friday. Vlog my entire uni freshers. I definitely burnt out from editing. The second it becomes a job, I started losing the passion for it. That's what I just That's what I just My name is Joanna Wilson, today I'm joined by Mr. Ellis Watts and we're going to chat about what it's like to be a self-employed cameraman slash video editor. Is that what you use as your title? What's your working title? Videographer. 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 <laughs> what Neil Wilson said in one of his NWG uh, chats was like, when someone asks you what you do for a job, what do you say? Um, and he was just saying to everyone, it's like, oh, I'm, just, I'm a gymnastics coach, I do this, I do that. And it's like, well, you, that's not you. As a gymnastics coach, your answer should be, oh, I, I take kids and I teach them um, incredible skills that they take on in future life, like body awareness and stuff. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, so the deadness is that like, give people incredible smiles. And that's it, yeah, exactly. So I thought of mine, and it was like, I take people's lives and turn them into incredible showreels. Lives into movies. Or into stories. Love it! Yeah? Yeah! So that's, that's my answer for that so one. So my name is Ellis Fox, and I turn people's lives into movies. There you go. I guess, well, if we take it right back to the start, Mm -hmm. When did you first have an interest in video creating and editing and all that jazz? So, um, there are videos that were on internet that will no longer grace the internet. Um, but I must have been 8 or 10 years old. And my friend Owen, yeah. 8? 8 or 10, it's somewhere around there, I can't remember it exactly, I'll be able to find it. I was, I was making videos before YouTube was a thing, in the sense of not like, editing them, but like, on my phone recording. There was like a little pause button you could do, so that was my editing. It was pause, play, pause, play. And I used to do stop motion and that. So like my little Lego characters, you'd move it, pause, play, pause, play, pause, play like that. So it looked like they were walking around. Loved it. But my friend Owen came to me and was like, do you watch YouTube? Want to cry. Uh, you can never see those videos, by the way. They are so cringe. My friend Owen um, just told me about YouTube and I was like, look, there's this YouTube thing going on. And he showed me some guy called, oh no, I can't remember his name. He made Nerf videos, right? But they were really well put together, like really well cinematography, okay. the editing and stuff. So I was like, I want to do that. Like, that's so fun, let's do it. So we made some Nerf videos, some Nerf zombie attack videos. Um, and it's funny because for Owen's 18th birthday, I put all the, we did four parts. I put all four parts onto a DVD, made a trailer for it, and then made a menu. So he could go part one, part two, part three, part four. And that was his birthday present, which was really cool. Started making short films, like that. when I say short films, like use that term loosely. <laughs> very, very loosely. But I was, I was just interested. And then I got into editing. Throughout all of school, I got bullied for it. Like it was just, it's not normal, is it? To post videos. I mean, I look back and probably deserve getting bullied for videos. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd have bullied myself. Yeah, but look at where you're at now. Exactly. Gaming videos, vlogs. Anything under the sun that taught me how to edit. You were all self-taught? All self-taught. Yeah. Everything. I just went onto YouTube. It was, it was like, I see something in a, in a YouTube video. How do I make myself do this? On mastering that one bit and making it look good. And I'd show mum and dad. I'm like, look what I did. Like, look at that. And they're like, whoa, how have you done that? And then I got onto more serious like um, software. And I started asking for a laptop for Christmas. I remember I got my first camera when I was 12. Uh, it was a little Hitachi video camera. I mean, fast forward all those years. I did drama at school. Because uh, I, oh, I really wanted to act as well, but that also helped with my on-camera presence. Yeah. So in sixth form, I wanted to do something more in the editing thing, so I took media. Yeah. But our media projects at home were still running Windows XP, right. like really old. And it was just it was really bad. So I dropped that. I took triple drama. I think I dropped out of sixth form and went to college because I wanted to do more media stuff. Like I wanted mm -hmm. to excel in what I could actually do as a as a creator. Then got kicked out of college. I mean, look, in all fairness, it's a two and a half hour bus ride to college. So I didn't go that many times. Right. I didn't I didn't show up often. My attendance was pretty bad. When I did attend, banging, you know, it was it was great. So after dropping out of sixth form, dropping out of college, I then went to uni, dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> However, at uni, I started a vlog series every single Friday where I just vlog my entire uni freshers. And those vlogs, everyone loved them. Some of my fondest time, they were very David Dobrik. Nice. And it's just when I, I just perfected that David Dobrik style of editing and storytelling and using a song whilst we're all going out and partying. And I still think to this day, if it weren't for COVID, I'd have, I'd have kept up with it. And I think those vlogs could have done well. They could have been like the David Dobrik in the UK. But it also lined up the next, probably the biggest moment of my life, if I'm being honest. Which was Ali sending me Niall's story saying that he needed an editor for his at the time girlfriend Emily's channel. It was so, when I when I applied, it was such a nothing apply. It was like, a, you know what, I'll give it a go. I'll, I'll sell myself a little bit in the email. 
and just go, look, I've done YouTube for ages, never edited before. Here's, here's, here's me. You've never edited before is a pretty throwaway comment, considering you've true. been editing for yourself for 10 years. Yeah, that is true. I meant never edited for like a client. For somebody else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never made money editing. And before you sent that email, was making money editing what you thought you wanted to do? Nope. I went to uni and I did a little bit of, I'll be honest, uni taught me nothing, apart from how to be social and do my own thing. Like, and I did, to and to put on weight, yeah, <laughs> fucking hell. 108 kilograms I got to at uni. I'll tell you what I did at uni, they were just teaching me stuff I'd already taught myself. So like, I didn't really have a drive to go in and learn more. I don't know, I never really knew what it was I wanted to do, it was always, always YouTube. Always YouTube, always content creating of some sort. And then okay. how did you find that transition to starting to make videos for other people? Fun, really fun at first. I wasn't doing a lot of editing in lockdown because I wasn't making that many videos, but I still wanted to keep that um, mm -hmm. fresh. So I did a few videos. So that transition to editing for Niall, it was like, this is a big YouTube, this is who I want to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, this, this is where I want to be right now. Um, so let's just show him what I've got. I just remember looking at it and going, oh, it, was, it was such a fuel to go, I'm gonna edit this video. It weren't even the thought of getting money for it when I was editing it mm -hmm. at first, because like, we didn't talk about payment. There was no, we'll pay you for this vlog. There was, it was never mentioned. It was just like, do you want to edit for us? And obviously I knew it leads to a job. Yeah. I'm not saying that, but just for that vlog, there was no payment there at all. It was just, oh, I get to show someone in the industry what I can do. Niall also helped me a lot of the time when we were editing, because he knows, he knows the game. Yeah. much better than I do. How to edit to the algorithm, how to edit for retention, how to, all the stuff that I didn't look at because I was just looking at pure storytelling and how I felt. The old vlogs that I edited when I first edited and you can tell there's a massive difference to now. Yeah. In the sense of there's so much more energy to all those vlogs. So much more to it. What so changed? I definitely burnt out from editing. It was, it the second it becomes a job, it's like we've said, the second it became a job, I started losing the passion for it. Oh, I want to do this. It will become like, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. You're talking about you going from editing a vlog every week for yourself that might have got a couple of thousand views mm -hmm. to a vlog doing mm -hmm. being 100k. Back then when we were in the height of making content, if a vlog got 100k views, it was good, but it weren't great. Do you know what I mean? Like, we got, we got videos that did more. Why are the other videos not doing as much? That bit I struggled with the most yeah. was the numbers, for sure. So fast forward, you're obviously working in Leeds, you're working with us, I feel mm. like people know quite a lot of yeah. that part of the story. At that point, were you working with anyone else, or was it just solely, solely and the guys, yeah. and being with us? All of them, that was it, my only client. And then, we weren't. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you went home. Mm -hmm. What happened then? So when I went home, the first thing I wanted to do was I was like, right, because I had, I started doing vlogs whilst I was up there, which is part of the reason I was Question, were you like, you. I'll, I'll be deadly honest, there were moments where I thought it. It's weird because even in the meeting when we had, when I was leaving, I understood like I couldn't fight back because I knew exactly what I'd done wrong. Yeah. Like I knew exactly it wasn't working out, so it's hard to go, oh you're so wrong. There were moments like, I, you know, I've been, I've been sent home, I need, to, I need to do something to show that I'm not flat on my ass right now. Like I need to keep up what I've got. I was more frustrated because I thought the vlogs that I was making, like I watch back them now and I think they're so funny. Mm -hmm. Because they're just, they're just scraps of, of sh but they just work together. So I was more like, oh, guys, we had something good there. Like, well, I had something good there, and I thought that was going to do really well. So I was frustrated about that. And I was like, I want to keep making content. And that was that was my, my goal at that point, was go home and do content myself. And do you think at the time that you were working with Niall, what was the dynamic there? Because obviously you'd only ever created videos of yourself. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to have a massively huge personal YouTube channel. Yeah. You want you want it to be Absolutely. I want to be the main character. Yeah. 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 So how how it. was that dynamic? It was so at first I didn't mind it. In the first few bit I was just so grateful to be where I am. Mm -hmm. And don't worry, I'm still grateful for the no, whole, whole opportunity. Tough. But it got to a point where I, I, I wanted more. But instead of going down the route of working harder to get more, I went, How can I it was almost like how can I set myself up so that if God forbid anything does happen, like if I do have to get sent home or you know if something happens when Nada decides she doesn't want to do content anymore like I'm gonna be left with nothing. It was me trying to think of a backup plan but also was my dream for, for years so it was like maybe I can start working on that. It created a little bit of friction unfortunately um, I didn't want it to be like that. The issue I always found was my vlogs were easier to edit because they weren't so graphically intensive so I remember Niall saw me in one of my vlogs whilst we were doing it on, on a trip, right? So we were actually on a laptop editing my vlog whilst we were going to film. And he brought up a comment to me and he said, mate, I, you know, I've never seen you work that hard on one of my vlogs. Like, why, why is it it's just your ones? And that struck a chord to me a little bit because I thought, I have worked hard on your vlogs. And also my laptop, not that it couldn't, but I'd rather be sat at home at my station 
when I'm editing your yours is more he's more of like a almost like a program. Do you know what I mean? Like his was the main event. His his video had to be perfect. It couldn't just be me on a laptop, kind of not quite perfect, just throwing together clips. But I can never really get that across to him uh, in in the right way. Because also, again, it comes with friendship. So he didn't like that. And then he also kept saying, oh, why don't you just upload the vlogs that you're making on my second channel? And I remember being like, why have they got to be on your second channel? Why can't I have this just little, it's just, it's just this little bit here. And again, it was only to, to set myself up in case anything happened. So yeah, it started with a little bit of friction, but it never made me not want to, not want Nara to succeed. It was never like, didn't want to succeed. It was, I've got an idea of how we could all succeed. And have this like, but like I don't think universe. nobody was ready to have that conversation. Nobody, no. that com that was not a conversation that ever happened. No, it was. So you went back. You continued making your own content. Was the yeah. idea to just try and live off the earnings of making your own content, or did you? Yeah. Quickly realise that you wanted and needed to get other clients. Both. The answer is both is yes. It was strange. I had the motivation to do it, but I didn't have the. Like I was too nervous to try. Okay. In a sense, yeah. you know what I mean. I was too nervous to try. Like I'm living at home. I've got to pay rent got to pay for and you know I'm 20 I think I was 23 when I moved back 22 23 like I can't be sat here with no job uh, I went to work part-time with my sister at her bar because she managed the bar there it was zero hour contract so it was still flexible for me to try and do content and do what I wanted and I also met my current missus there as well mm -hmm. so you know, I can't be, can't be too sad about that. So I did work with you guys every now and then. So they'd like message and be like, look, do you want to come do some camera work? Which I was always so grateful for. And I'll be honest, the first few times I felt awkward. Because it's, obviously it's like a, you know, you've yeah. been sacked. And it, it weren't like a, again, it weren't like a, F you guys don't want to be there with you. It was more of a, how do you guys feel about me still? Mm -hmm. Like, have you invited me up out of pity? Have you invited me up because you want to see me? Like what's, what what's the dynamic here? And it's just yeah, our own heads goes a million miles an hour. So I had a client that was paying me that sorted, and that all went downhill eventually. Then obviously because I did work with you and Sarah, Lauren yeah. Jumps reached out to me, and she was like, "Listen, I've seen your work with Sarah. I want to get into making long form content on YouTube. I've always done shorts. I've seen your work. Like, can we work together?" It all just comes about. It's I stop like I'm searching for it. They just kind of and this has all come from from you guys, and I'll always forever be grateful because there's no way I would have had people approach me if it weren't for you guys giving the opportunity. So where are you at now then? What does your work life look like now? So now I have four constant clients, um, Lauren Jumps. I then have another client called Alex Hefner. He's, uh, he reacts to films and movies and stuff. And then I've also got two other clients, which is Luke Sutton, mm -hmm. doing his um, uh, Understanding Men podcast, which is phenomenal, by the way. The person that does the audio, Lucy, then messaged me and said, listen, I've got another podcast from uh, Dr. Frankie. Like she's, um, Sign up a new podcast and I've told her about your video editing skills. Do you want to do some edit in there? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I can do that completely. So I have four four main clients, I suppose, that I take on at the moment doing editing weekly. And then I just have the sporadic ones with, with the guys if they need filming or if they need uh, video editing, like I'm doing some of Jay's Vlogmas this year. And you're happy with where you work at right now? Yeah, I really am. I'm excited for the future in yeah. a sense of, because after editing for so many years, it's like you can burn out editing quick time. And I'm quite an ADHD type of guy in the sense of sitting there and looking at something for so long. I, I want to do other things. I'm like, oh, what game's on? Or, oh, can I go do this? And really get into my fitness now after moving in with you guys. Nice. You really gave me a passion for keeping fit and healthy and seeing like what you guys can do, like backflips and stuff like that. I was like, wow, I'd love to be able to do something yeah. like, like that. And obviously editing, that, that it just doesn't help. Sat in a chair all day. I'm happy with where I am. I'm more excited for where I'm gonna be. Massively rich living in Dubai. Okay. I'm totally kidding. Mm -hmm. But just, I think next year I'm going to send it a bit more of myself on content, but get myself more organised so I've got loads of income. And then I can start doing the things which I've spoken about for years, which is just giving back to the people that's given to me. What advice would you give to somebody who is currently self employed or is thinking about being self employed? I'd say, first of all, do it. You'd kick yourself if you didn't give yourself a chance. You have to try it. If you try and it doesn't work, there's nothing stopping you from going to get a nine to five job. But if you believe in what you're doing and if you want to be self-employed, just, just do it. Genuinely, because you'll only regret it if you didn't and you don't know how far it could take you. There is no shame in failing something as long as you've tried. There's no shame in failing. People learn from failure all the time. Also, um, discipline, self-discipline. I still don't have that. Game of FIFA. <laughs> that game of FIFA turns into three games of FIFA. They're saying be your own boss. It's like, be your own boss. What they'd say to you right now if they caught you playing FIFA. Sort your hours, do your job, make your money. That way you can separate work and social life. 
and the social life becomes so much more rewarding because you've done your work. Thank you. Thank you I'm very sure much. that everybody loved that time. Well, I certainly did. Particularly like the earlier part as well, because I've not heard quite a lot of that. Have you not? Not really. Oh, yeah, little so me, no videos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Go follow Ellis on all platforms. Go check out his old uni vlogs. I'm sure that oh, thank you. you'll be watching them for hours on end. I was um, fat boy in them as well. <laughs> a big boy. Comment big boy. On <laughs> his, um, thank you for Thank you very much for having me. me. I appreciate it. Subscribe to the third channel. We'll mm -hmm. see you tomorrow. Keep watching it when we possible. Just work. Bye. Work, work, down. Work. In one of his NW. Excuse me. Is that the printer?